Thanks for tuning in to some New York Jets talk on Jets FM on EOFN. That's the Arledge Football Network and also, of course, on the Prime Sports Network YouTube channel as we continue our talks on the New York Jets. And uh, good timing uh, to be able to uh, welcome in our next guest. Uh, he has his own uh, podcast. He's had that for a long time called Jets Rewind. I'm going to show everybody what that looks like in just a second. But first, let's uh, introduce Marty Shupak to the show. Marty, thanks for doing this. My pleasure, Craig. It's uh, timing is everything, of course. So yeah. after we do this show, I want to schedule another one for tomorrow, same time. Let's oh. see if we can get a, a wide receiver, another one. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, uh, this was uh, being uh, the fact that uh, the news just came out. We are recording this about quarter to five on Friday about the Jets receiving Hassan Reddick in a deal with the Eagles. Uh, it, it's... Uh, it, it, it's really a great trade, and I haven't even had any time, neither of you, to kind of digest it. But other, other than for me, because I have backed Joe Douglas 100% and I've never wavered, that this is just proof that Joe Douglas knows what he's doing. And um, and I, I, I was all for them letting Bryce Huff take his $50 million crappy, upgraded, ridiculous deal somewhere else to the Eagles. And instead, the Jets get a pass rusher that's probably better than Bryce Huff right now at this stage of his career for a lot cheaper. Um, and so it just proves that even though uh, it's a draft pick, that's a draft pick that they don't have to give up for, what, two years and it's a draft pick that might just end up being a third rounder. So, I mean, at that point, if the Jets win and do what they're supposed to do, like win a Super Bowl in the next couple of years, no one will care. It was uh, I, nobody saw it coming. But, you know, if you go back the last week, as we all know, uh, David Clowney visited the Jets. Yep. And uh, unlike Mike White, they let him out of the building. So I knew there was a chance that he wouldn't sign. And of course, uh, Clowney ended up signing with the Panthers. So you knew that they had to get do something else. I didn't want to draft a player. You know, we want to stick all to offense, but you knew something was going to happen. I thought maybe they, they could have signed the defensive end uh, from Atlanta. He's 37. Uh, his name escapes me right now. You probably know who it is, the free agent. Oh, uh, Campbell? Is yeah. That, is that who you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. Who, who, who's good. I mean, he's old. Oh, yeah. But he's he old. All, he's old. Yeah. He played all 17 games. Oh, he's but, durable. Yeah, he's 37 and he's durable. Yeah, but but this is a good trade. I, 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 I'm I guessing, uh, Greg, that the Eagles have a lot of big contracts. They had to unload something. I know I think for this year, I think it's $14 million. I could be mistaking. So uh, I'm sure part of the condition – is we'll look at the details will come out is that if the Jets re-sign him and he's 29 so even if he's on the back nine of his career uh, he had 11 sacks in 2023 and yep. 16 sacks 2022 and, and as we all know Greg um, our, our coach Robert Sala he loves to rotate his yep. defense in and out so this kind of fits the bill, and uh, it's a happy day. It's a, it's not only a good Friday, but it's a great Friday. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. I love it. Uh, yeah, actually, if you look at it, that's, uh, let's see, 27, 38. That is um, uh, 20, 34. That's 50 sacks in the last four years. So uh, you're looking at a guy that's averaging over 12 and a half sacks a year. And like you said, 11 sacks last year at 29 years old. Let's just even compare him to Shaq Barrett. And everybody, th uh, the news came out that Shaq Barrett was headed to the Jets and that the Dolphins came in, swooped him in, and, th and then there he goes. Well, you know what? First of all, when that happened, I was okay with that too. It's like, look, I wanted Shaq Barrett. The, the year that he left Denver to go to Tampa is when I wanted him. Because you knew that in his limited time in Denver that he was going to break out if he was given the opportunity to play full time. And he actually did that. He was a monster for Tampa Bay for those first three or four years. But the last couple of years, he's done nothing for Tampa Bay. So why would I want a guy who's 31 years old that hasn't done anything for the past couple of years? Instead, I got a 29-year-old guy that his sack totals have continued to double for the past four years. So again, yes, did they have to give up a draft pick as opposed to just signing um, Barrett? But again, this is a 2026 draft pick. Jet fans don't care, nor should they. No, they don't care. And, and I think a good part of it, too, is you know he's a seasoned veteran, 
And um, Jermaine Johnson came through last year, the last half of the year. We see he's a real talent. And we don't want to hang our hat on Will McDonald, our first-round pick last year. But if he could improve, he showed oh, yeah. uh, he showed some good burst. So, you know, I'm excited. It was never the defense that, you know, Jet fans were concerned about. Though, you know, at this point, Greg, I, I really think the other hole they have to fill is a, a safety, which we'll have to see what happens in the draft or uh, maybe another free agent, too. So I'm ex- I'm really excited about what happened. And now, you know, as you know, the uh, their free agent signings uh, kind of put them in a really strong position going into the draft as far as what to do. So I think we're in a good spot for the Jets, and all Jet fans should be happy right now. Yeah, let's uh, just take a look at the uh, R Lads uh, depth chart right now. And again, keeping in mind that uh, they haven't updated yet uh, the Reddick move because uh, they are only going to update it on R Lads when they know it, there's been a contract, it's on the line, it's done deal. Not that it's not a done deal, but R Lads just goes with the official official. So that'll be coming in any minute now. But uh, if you look at it, um, you mentioned safety. The good news is, or at least taking a look at their draft capital, it's not something that they're going to worry about early enough. Uh, nobody has any idea what they think about Bernard Converse, but we know they're going to add another safety. But that'll probably be somewhere middle to late round uh, in the draft unless they add another veteran. Um, I think right now, defensively, the rotation seems to be set up front. As you mentioned, they want to go nine deep at least with that defensive line. And uh, they've got nine now. So I think they're done up front. Um, you know that they don't need a lot of depth at right linebacker. So, yes, you add another safety. You do that a little bit later on. Everything else, though, now has to turn to the attention of the offense. And that includes, of course, uh, what the big decision is going to be if they hold on to the, the first-round pick at number 10. Do they use that on one of the tackles? The kid from Penn State, the kid from Notre Dame. Is at least one of those two guys available? Or do they opt to go wide receiver? And Again, that's if they hold on to that pick and they don't trade down. I would love for them to trade that. I just want to backtrack just for uh, one uh, thing. I just want to mention, too, that Ashton Davis hasn't resigned, but he's still a free agent. And he looked yes. aw- awful his first couple of years. Last year, he had tremendous improvement. Yep. So if, if they could pick him up, I would love to give him more playing time, too. Agreed. He was a different player last year from the for his first two years. His first two years, I didn't want him on the field. And last year, it seemed wherever he was, he was making plays. Yep. Uh, he, he, I don't know if he played more than 30% of the plays, but he was definitely active. Now, as far as the offense, as we know, the, the good news, bad news is the good news is this draft is full of offensive tackles and wide receivers, uh, which the Jets need. The bad news is they don't have a second-round pick. Greg, I would love for them to trade back. Um, and, you know, everything is going to hinge. I'll tell you what, two weeks ago, I was going to—I was telling everyone this draft is going to hinge upon when J.J. McCarthy goes. Today, I think it's beyond that. I think it's going to hinge upon uh, where Penix goes and where Bo Nix goes. Because, as you know, they all get quarterback crazy. So how far up in the first round, if they go in the first round, and I think they're going to go in the first round. Penix, I I hear he had a very good pro day, which you would know better than me. So, as you know, if that happens, it pushes everyone further back. Um, We're told, or I've heard that, uh, and now this is the time of rumors, as you know. And the latest rumor I hear is the Patriots want to move back uh, which I don't know if I believe that. But well, they would be absolutely nuts if they did that. They are sitting right. on a gold mine if Jaden Daniels is sitting there. if they, I, I would love it. Please, don't take Jaden Daniels. That's the, the, the worst possible thing to Jet fans is the Patriots getting a hold of Jaden Daniels. Right. But, you know, the Jets sitting at 10, the three teams right behind him, I'm told they really want to move up. You're talking at 11, the, the Minnesota Vikings. At 12, the Denver Broncos, and at 13, the Las Vegas Raiders. I would love for them to move back a few spots. And, you know, I don't have a chart in front of me, but I'd love to get in the second round. 
If they move back just a few spots, I don't think it's enough to get in the second round. But maybe if they threw in one of their fourth round picks, they could. I would love to get one of these tackles. I would just love it. I I am in love with this J.C. Latham. Since that championship game where he kind of folded on that last play, I've been looking into him. He, this guy looks like he has everything like, you know, the Jets need. He looks like he has it all, and he has a mean streak about him. Unfortunately, uh, he's been moving up the charts, too. Uh, when this college season ending, he was, like, looked upon as a late first-round pick. I've seen him as high as number 10. And then you have what I call, I guess, the three Fs, whose names I could barely pronounce. Fashana from Penn State, Fontenu from Washington, and Fuaga from Oregon State, who were good. I think, and um, Greg, you tell me, I, I'm sure Joe Walt will be gone by the 10th pick. And, and Fashanu. Fashanu, you think he'll be gone? I, I, I think so. Um, I, t- I, t- t- wait, and then, look, we'll... we'll uh, we're actually going to do on the R Lads channel next week. We're going to have a live mock draft on Wednesday, so that's going to be a great opportunity to find out what the top scouts at R Lads how they feel about this draft. Um, but I think, just for me, I, I think that Fashano and Alt might end up going in that top ten. Latham might be available. The question again then is going to be. Um, how much does Joe Douglas like Latham? Does, is he in love with Latham as a guy that if he's there or if Fashano, if they're both there, if one of them's there, I think one of them will be there. So I think the question is, is does Joe like him enough? And if so, I think that's where they go because I don't, I, I see what you're saying as far as that other group, but I, look, unless you get a second round pick in return to move down five spots and then you grab one of those other linemen you added, then that's okay. I'm all right with that. And he also has to feel that there isn't much of a difference in, in order to uh, recoup that extra second round pick to move down. But the other reason that I, I'm interested in that second round pick or that additional pick is what they're going to do with Zach. Because I do not, I am not going to feel good going into the regular season looking at my depth chart and seeing two 34 and 40 year old quarterbacks on the roster with nothing else. I'm going to be, I'm not going to feel good about that. If, if they don't keep Zach, which I'm perfectly happy for them to do, then I think they need to, to use that additional pick to, to go ahead and draft that quarterback. Go ahead and, and you go and get Knicks. You go and get Penix. You go and get that guy uh, if, if there's a guy that you feel is worthy of, of uh, the, the sixth uh, quarterback spot. But I can't believe the Jets will enter the season without a prospect, somewhat a young prospect, that quarterback on the depth chart. And I think it would be, I, I think it would be a downer for Jet fans if that's exactly what happens. Well, let me ask you this. Where do you think that Bo Nix and Penix go right now? I think and Penix would be the four, the fifth guy. I think he's he's the guy that could go somewhere around 10 to 15, I think. Nix will probably go after that, but where, who knows. And the thing is, there's going to be a lot of off, like you were saying, offensive line is so important now that you're going to get a ton of linemen going, which is why the Jets have to use their first round pick or their first pick overall on a tackle there is there's there's about you can go 15 deep at receiver now sure you're gonna be a big difference between who you're picking in the top 10 and who you're picking at in the second round but you're gonna get quality receivers in the second round so you're not you're not getting a starting offensive tackle in the second round you're just not so if the jets are going to use a high pick on a tackle it has to be with their first pick in the draft then they go after a wide receiver with their second pick see that's why i would prefer they do that Hold on to Zach, keep him on the team, let him sit the bench the entire year. I don't care. I just want the look. I want the look of a young kid on the roster that they at least have a possibility that if something happens, that that you've got a young guy that you can turn to. But if they don't do that and they trade Zach, then um, I think it's possible that they could end up uh, spending a high draft pick on a quarterback. I will be shot and I will jump into the Hudson River, which is a mile from my house. If Zach Wilson is on the roster the first game of the season, there is no way he's going to be on the roster. Uh, It's nothing personal against Zach Wilson. I've always said that. And keep in mind, 
the week that they played Houston, he was the NFL player of the week. He sure. looked like a decent quarterback. I just think he's – I don't want to use the word toxic. It's just like it's oil and water right now with him in the locker room. I just can't see it. If it was up to me – Well, that's, uh, that, 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 that's, that's, of course, if you just believe uh, every single source from, like, The Athletic, which I don't. Uh, if you believe all the rumors, which I don't. Uh, what I believe is, I believe when I hear people talk, when I hear uh, Wilson uh, talk, when I hear Salah talk, Douglas talk, Woody talk, I haven't heard anybody say anything negative about Zach Wilson this season. No one. All I've heard about negative talk about Zach Wilson are from reporters and rumors and innuendo. And you know what? You know where those guys are? They're off the Jets. Rex Hogan, gone. Assistant coaches that have been talking, gone players gone all that all that all that nonsense they're all gone now I, I agree I don't I don't think that Zach uh, is has been uh, um, uh, treated fairly I think that uh, Hackett has no idea how to use him I think it's probably in Zach's best interest if he goes um, my point is is that I'd still rather have Zach there than nothing I don't want to go into the season with Tyrod Taylor as a 34 year old backup or however old he is 37 years old and you have nothing else. That's it. It's Aaron Rodgers. It's Tyra Taylor. And then that means that the Jets are going to find a, f- a franchise quarterback again. I don't want to well, wait until 2025 or 2026 to find a franchise quarterback. They're not. They, they, they're going to draft a quarterback. And if it was up to me, the Marty Shupak theory is I, I kind of believe like um, what a lot of these experts say that the NFL – teams and coaches, they really have no idea how to evaluate quarterbacks. <laughs> no. Going back for years, if it was up to me, I would draft two quarterbacks, one in the fourth with the fourth round pick and one in the seventh round. Now they have the Mr. Irrelevant pick, which, and uh, I'm a guy that I, I was in love with Brock Purdy as the first or second t- time I saw him play. So I would draft a quarterback in the fourth round and the seventh round. Now, when I mention that, because I have my own theories about uh, roster movement, roster placement, I think like the Jets <clears throat> should carry 10 offensive linemen, not eight or nine, yeah. until they resolve this injury issue. Yep. Now, before they just change the rule on the kickoffs, what I said was they're de-emphasizing special teams. So I disagree with Bill Belichick, where I don't think they have the luxury to take up a roster spot in a 53-man roster just for special teams. I would have to... You're talking about a, a kick returner? Or uh, a gunner, for instance. Well, yeah. Uh, that, that, yeah. Justin Hardy, I would have used... I agree. Uh, Irv Charles and... <clears throat> Greg, I don't know what the issue is as far as all these injuries. I hear all these different things. Some people say it's the field. I don't know if it's the field. The NFL says it's not the field. But if uh, all I know is the last three years, the Jets are going down like crazy. They yeah. lead, lead the league in like ACL injuries and Achilles heel injuries. I want to carry 10 offensive linemen, but I also want to carry four quarterbacks. That's how I feel. And I want to carry four quarterbacks – None named Zach Wilson. All right, a lot. And again, coaches will disagree, but I, I'm of the opinion, and and actually Robert Salad does that. Well, he'll take big safeties in college and move them to the linebacker spot, and kind of interchange them. And I would I would do that, but I gotta get this offensive line situation resolved. It's just driving me crazy, and I gotta get a a young quarterback that they could develop. So on that uh, stance, I agree with you 100%, but I would get two quarterbacks. Yeah, well, you know they're not going to do that. Uh, it's hard enough sometimes nowadays to have three quarterbacks on your roster, but they, that's why I said the Jets have to have three this year. Um, but look, I think the problem gets solved, though, because they're going to use their first pick on a tackle. Uh, there's just no doubt in my mind. Uh, look, if one of the top three guys go for some reason, then that's when he definitely has to trade down. Use one of those. Then he gets one of those other second-tier first-round offensive tackles. But he's going to get a tackle. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So if he does that, 
then that see then then you look at the depth chart right now that gives him nine nine linemen because Warren Mitchell you throw in the first round draft pick is three you know Schweitzer's coming back is four and I think Hansen is a quality backup guy to keep an eye on long term he had a great college career at Oregon those guys can actually make an impact he's only been in the league a couple of years so I think they're probably only and, – and maybe Newman is your 10th guy if they think he's capable of being your 10th guy, unless you use another pick later in the, dra- in the draft for another offensive lineman. But I think if you use that first-round pick on a tackle, you might only be one lineman away from reaching your 10. Okay, let me just uh, state a couple of things. Um, I'm allowed to disagree, aren't I? On this show? Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was high on Carter Warren, but doing a deeper dive since the season ended into the films – I'm not sure, to be honest with you. He started out better than what he ended up. That's number one. Number two, Max Mitchell had a better first year than he did last year. Last year, he was I thought he was awful. And I really liked him the first year, too. He had a medical problem with blood clots, and I thought maybe the medication or whatever affected it, but then I was told that it wasn't. So I'm not saying to cut them. But I don't want to hang my hat on those two guys either right now. Though, again, I'm not in there every day. And it seems like the Jets, from what I hear in Florham Park, they're a lot higher on Carter Warren than, than I am. They are. Now, which is, which is good. Which is, all that, and, which is all that counts. Right. Doesn't matter and, what we think. But they like correct. him. And they and expect then, him to be their starting right. tackle in 2025. In fairness to him. They had him at right tackle. When he was at Pitt, he played mostly left tackle. And they said, you know, he was injured, and I think it was an ACL. Yeah, whatever. he had a late – yeah, he was a little late. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that if they thought if he didn't tear his ACL, that he would have been like a, a second, second round draft pick. pick. Yeah. Yeah. So, listen, again, I, I go by the eye test, and I hope I'm wrong and the Jets are right. And, you know – a lot of times, as you know, Greg, when you have these injuries, it's not just the uh, physical rehab, it's the mental rehab too. Now, we saw Brees Hall came back from the ACL. He looked like he never was never injured. Going back, we've seen Adrian Peterson have an ACL. He came back better than he was. I'm going to give these guys the benefit of the doubt. If Carter Warren and Max Mitchell – pan out, I'll be the happiest guy in the world. Well, Max Mitchell, out. though, uh, is only going to end up being a, uh, a swing tackle. Uh, because right. if, you, if you if you use your first round pick on a tackle, then 2025, well, probably 2026, because Moses might be here next year as well. But then you've got your Carter Warren and your first round pick at tackle. you got Mitchell as your swing. That's the, that's the best case scenario if, all, if if these guys work out. And the thing is, that's why what I try to do is is I would be more critical myself at at some of these. Hey, you know what? I don't know if I don't know if they're seeing what I'm seeing, or I'm a little bit I'm not on par with what Joe sees or what they see. But I've I, I'm gonna I'm going to succeed or fail with Joe Douglas with my belief that he's the right guy because I still believe he's the right guy to be the general manager of a winning franchise. I think the injuries have killed his momentum. You can say what you want about whether it was the right thing to get Aaron Rodgers. And to, and, and I think the, the, the thing that they didn't do right, and I completely think this was Joe Douglas's fault and Coach Salah's fault, was the decision to go after Hackett. I think that is and, – and the decision to hire LaFleur, one of Salah's buddies – and to do that when we when when he let's remember when 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 because I know you would because I had a I, I I know a lot of people didn't remember this but when they brought Lafleur in the whole idea was was they were bringing Jake Knapp in as they were bringing uh, what's his name in the 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 um, uh, was it Knapp Greg Knapp yeah, I don't want to get him, I don't want to get him mistaken from the golfer Greg Knapp right. uh, and that was going to be your experienced offensive guy. And he, they never replaced him. And even Salah said it two years later. I made a mistake. I should have replaced him. But it was too late by then. And that's what has killed 
Zach's uh, ability to be a good quarterback at this point, and it's also killed any momentum that they had last year when Rodgers went down. So to me, that's been the biggest issue that I've had with either Douglas or Salah was the wrong decisions at trying to find a good... Because take a look at what's going on with D'Amico. D'Amico gets a young quarterback, just like the Jets did, but what they brought in was a quality offensive coordinator that knew what the hell he was doing and set, the, set CJ Stroud up to have a fantastic season. So the, the Jets have been kind of behind the eight ball ever since uh, the decision to bring LaFleur in without a seasoned veteran, and they've been playing catch-up ever since. I, I want to uh, talk about Joe Douglas from my end I, and how I look at it, too. I just want to mention the, the Greg Knapp injury uh, – Tragedy was awful. Yeah. But I, I thought they were, I don't know, I thought they were exploiting that for too long. I mean, how long are we going to hear about that? You know, we were hearing about it so long. But let me just get to Joe Douglas. Because there's been a lot of revision history with him. And I'm a huge Joe Douglas fan. Keep in mind, when he came on the Jets, they already had the draft. That's number one. Okay, if you remember that. He came after the draft. You mean uh, the Quinn and Williams draft? Yeah, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was... Um, uh, 2019. Yeah. Okay. He came right after that. Keep in mind, too, he got the job because of his relationship with Adam Gase. Adam Gase pushed for him. Yeah. With that said, I have no proof, but I truly believe in my heart that Adam Gase was influential in that draft... OK, again, I have no proof, but I would say to him, look, I helped get you this job. I want to have my two cents in on the draft. OK, so that draft was awful. Let's face it. It was just horrible. Um, but look at the good drafts he's had. He's had a, a couple of good drafts, but also keep in mind, he took a lot of heat when they let Robbie Anderson go. Did that turn out to be a good decision? Yeah, I, th I think it was. Uh, his bad decisions, I thought, and we said it on Jets Rewind, he should have signed Bryce Huff last year when it was cheaper. Now, way it turned out, they couldn't sign him for the price he got, which is fine. So I thought that was a mistake letting him go. His biggest mistake, and I think most Jets fans would agree, was not getting a season backup quarterback, just hanging everyone's hat, on Aaron Rodgers, not thinking that he's not going to go down. I thought that was his biggest mistake. With that said, I think he has changed the culture of the Jets. If it were, I was Woody Johnson, I would give him a two- or three-year extension. I wouldn't extend Robert Sala. Agreed. Robert, uh, Robert Sala, now we get to see what type of coach he is. He has the player. So, I'm as long as Aaron Rodgers stays healthy. Right. I'm a huge Joe Douglas fan, and I want him to stay. And he, I think he's the best general manager we've had in a long time. Yep. Going back, I guess, to Mike Tannenbaum, who I wasn't even crazy about, but a lot of Jet fans were. So that's my two cents. Yeah, no. Back. I mean, I understand that. Not And again, every general manager. I mean, just take a look. I think one of the big reasons Bill Belichick isn't coaching right now is because of his track record as a GM over the last decade. So even, even, even the great minds – you're in the game long enough and you're going to have bad drafts. You're going to have unlucky drafts. And um, of course the Becton move was a bad move because of the fact that the writing was on the wall regarding whether he was going to be fit enough. He was such a big guy. Was he going to be able to transition from being such a big guy? No, he couldn't. He didn't. And that was a failure on his behalf, but that happens. Uh, again, you're not going to hit on home runs every every year in the draft, but for the most part, I think he's done a very good dra job with the draft. I think he's done a very good job this offseason. I am excited to see how this team is developing right now because, again, it's all up now to Aaron Rodgers. I think this team this year is going into this season is without question going to be better talented than they were last year. 
and, and look how excited we were last year about the possibilities of Aaron Rodgers. Even people thought the Jets were a true, you know, playoff contender, championship contender. And we are going to be a much better team personnel this season than we were last season. And what I like is, is that a lot of the fans and a lot of the experts are actually like poo-pooing this idea now. They've already given up on the Jets. They only think the Jets are, ah, uh, they, they, they suck. Their organization sucks. Their ownership sucks. GM sucks. Coach sucks. They don't know what they're doing. So they've completely given up. And I think that's a that's the best case scenario for the Jets right now is that instead of last year when everybody was pointing their fingers at the Jets were going to be a sleeper team for the Super Bowl, now everybody's going to give up on the Jets. And I think that's going to be the perfect remedy for us to sneak up on everybody as long as Aaron stays healthy. We want to be under the radar. You know, last year the Jets didn't want to be in hard knocks too. So, you know, uh, I agree this year, you know, they want to be – like I said, under the radar, I wanted to ask you a question. If they're able to move into the second round, um, there's a couple of receivers that I like. Uh, and uh, Xavier Worthy, I like uh, Xavier Leggett. And I'm really fascinated with Lad McCockney. Oh, yeah. Now, Lad McCockney, um, how far do you think the draft has to go? You think he's like a top 40 pick, a top 50 pick? That's uh, my question. I don't know how our lads has him ranked, but he's one of the best route runners I've ever seen um, coming out of Georgia. He's 5'11", but that guy, is a, he's a heck of a player. The only thing also that, uh, you know, I mentioned Xavier Word that scares me about him is he's so skinny. He's like 6'1", 163, but, you know, he's, he's as fast as anything. And Xavier Leggett, who's... Uh, I guess he's uh, 6'3", 227 from uh, South Carolina. I'm intrigued with him. Uh, do you think those players will be available like the first half of the second round? Yeah, I, I think a, a few of them are going to be. That, that's why I said you, you have to go tackle first because it's so deep at wide receiver that a few of these guys you've mentioned will be there. Someone will be there that you like without question. Not the case with offensive line. You have to go offensive line first because those guys are going to go off the board. You are going to get – there is a possibility you're going to get a record for offensive linemen drafted in the first round. Everybody's going to go after offensive linemen. So you're going to have a nice group of wide – now, again, the Jets have to get that second-round pick, though. That's going to be the right. trick. Are they going to move down from 10 to get the second-round pick? Or are they going to have to maybe move up from the third round by trading a pick in next year's draft to try to move up into the second round? Which I wouldn't be surprised if they did that. Because, again, as you said, even though they're going to go kind of all in this year, they, I think Joe kind of learned his lesson from last year. It, it can't be about going all in. It's got to be about the future of the franchise. It's got to be about stability for the long term. And what's also funny is, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm looking at some of these free agency signings that the Jets have brought in so far this season. Uh, do you see any? Do you see any guys that uh, uh, that come from the Aaron Rodgers tree? I thought Aaron Rodgers was the general manager of this football team. Where are all the Aaron Rodgers guys? You know, that's the thing that just. Uh, I was listening to that crap. Uh, in New York, you know, on the guest network and, and, and other places. And it was making me sick, the stupidity and ignorance of these assholes talking about Aaron Rodgers being the GM of this football team. It's, it's just, I mean, you know, you lose all your respect from logical thinking people when you say shit like that. Aaron Rodgers is so far off from being the general manager of his football team. Just because he wants a couple of players on his team that he knows he can play with, that he recommends, doesn't make him any different from any other superstar quarterback that would have came to the New York Jets. So my point is, is that I think that overall, he's looking to build also for the future, but he understands that because tr like his job could be on the line. He understands that getting to the playoffs this year is a must. One of the things, too, Greg, that, you know, looking ahead, and you mentioned looking ahead and building a franchise with a foundation, they're going to have an issue where uh, they're going to have Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall, and Sauce Garner. Their contracts are all going to come up at the same time. Yeah. And gun to my head, I mean, it's – I mean, Jet fans will kill me, but I'm, I know it's early, but I can't see them signing, re-signing all three in my mind. So that's going to be an issue. And, and – 
The one good thing is, too, is that the salary cap jumped up a lot this year, and it's going to continue to jump. I predict not next year, but two or three years after that, they're going to go to an 18-game season. So you're going to see, I think it's going to coincide with a real big jump in the salary cap, too. But if they go to an 18-game season, I think they're going to have to increase the rosters like from 53 to like 56, which uh, which should be interesting. So that's an issue with these three superstars coming up for uh, contracts. Well, what I'm actually more um... – what I'd be more concerned with is, is Jermaine Johnson because Johnson and uh, Garrett and Sauce all are first rounders. Um, I, I think they have a better chance with Brees because, again, he's a running back. And right. And his market's going to be down. And so I think they'll be able to work something out with Brees. So the, I, I, being able to get, get – and, and I think they will be able to work them all in. The question is, is when he'll do it. Uh, nothing holds – there's no reason that he can't – uh, uh, get these guys in early. He doesn't have to wait to the last minute to give him a mega deal. He doesn't have to tag one of the guys and force him into a long-term negotiation. So, And I'm sure he's looking at that just like you are and like every other Jet fan that might be thinking about that. He knows what he's doing. I know it's not going to be easy to do, but I think it's manageable because one of those guys is a running back. And even Jermaine Johnson, a lot's going to depend on how – what kind of impact he has. Because if he's like a monster this season, that is going to definitely uh, make things that much more difficult because then you're you're looking at an edge rusher who everybody wants and, uh, you know, a lockdown corner that everybody wants. Uh, to tell right. you the truth, I think that might even be the order. I think it might be Sauce 1, Jermaine 2, and, and right. Garrett 3. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. I hear you. They might only be able to keep three out of four, but hey, right. it's up to uh, Joe Douglas to make it work. What's your take? And again, I know it's, it's your show, but I have to ask you, you're the expert on, uh, some quarterbacks that might go in the fourth or fifth round. I just want an idea. I know our lads does a great job as far as, um, listing their prospects. So you're kind of on the inside. So think in terms of the Jets, are there any fits there, some guys that are ranked like in the fourth or fifth round? Well, um, we can go over the guys that I think, because you only have about maybe 12 guys in total that you can be, okay, no matter where they go, these are guys that you feel have a shot. So once you get past your top three and you get past McCarthy, Penix, and Nix, then you're looking at guys like Spencer Rattler, uh, who is an intriguing prospect. I mean, this is a guy that was in Oklahoma, got replaced by Caleb Williams, which is the reason uh, that things didn't work out. Actually, for both of them, Caleb Williams followed Lincoln Riley to USC, and then Rattler wound up leaving to South Carolina. But Rattler actually looked pretty good when it was all said and done. Uh, after struggling a little bit, he was supposed to be like a first round draft pick when he came out initially and had a pretty good first season at Oklahoma. Uh, then you're looking at guys like. Uh, not only that, not interrupted, he was actually favored, I think, for the Heisman Trophy. That season, well, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, go ahead. I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt. Um, go ahead. And then I would just, you know, then you're looking at maybe Devin Leary, Michael Pratt. These are a couple of guys that I think will be, you know, middle round, that, that type of territory you're probably looking at. I mean, two is a younger brother could be intriguing, um, but th- there really isn't a whole lot. Sam Hartman, I think he's a little too small. I wouldn't even look at him as a starting quarterback in the NFL. Somebody that probably gets drafted, though. So you want to keep an eye on him exactly where he goes. But really, that's about it. There's, there's not much else uh, to look at when it comes to... Because there are a few other guys, but I don't even think they're worth really mentioning. I think I've I've hit on everybody. That's uh, so yeah. I I, I just think that in in all, uh, I don't look. Nobody can guess what's going to happen to Brock Purdy because of the fact that Brock, if he would have been drafted by the Jets, would would have looked like Zach Wilson. Correct. So that is all dependent upon if they do bring a guy in. What you want more than anything is 
try to bring in a guy with experience. That's the best thing I can say. Bring in a guy that has four years of experience because that is what you're seeing turn into success in the NFL. Aiden O'Connell had a very successful rookie year uh, last year for, for Las Vegas. Why? Because he played for four, four or five years. Purdy, successful. Why? Because he played for four years at Iowa State. So I think if you can find a guy like and Pratt, I think Pratt played for about four years at Tulane. So he's got experience. Right. Leary's got experience. So yeah, maybe those are guys aren't bad uh, possibilities if you want to grab one of those guys in uh, you know around the middle rounds. You touched upon something though when you mentioned uh, Greg Knapp and the assistant coaches and all this. I kind of thought that the Jets kind of missed out. I'll tell you why, my thinking, and maybe it's off base. And I know Robert Sala is is loyal to a fault with assistant coaches. But with the NIL, with everything going on in college, there was a little bit of a trend, if you saw, where some college coaches, they don't want to be bothered with this NIL stuff, and they ended up going to the NFL, all right? I know the... Um, the head coach at Boston College went to the NFL as a coordinator. And there were a couple of other coaches that did the same thing. They've just had – I know Chip Kelly gave up his head coaching job to become a coordinator, I guess, at Ohio State. I thought the Jets kind of missed an opportunity to try to recruit some good college coaches for this staff. And, I, again, I think Robert Sala is a little bit loyal to a fault – a lot of Jet fans have been on this um, def- offensive line coach. Uh, I think it's Carter is his name. Keith and Carter? Keith Carter. They just, they just don't like him. And, and I'll tell you what, I don't think he could be that bad if they got <laughs> some of these uh, offensive line uh, free agents. So, But, again, I thought they missed out, Greg, on a, a chance to recruit some good assistant coaches to the Jets. Yeah, I uh... – I, you know, I kind of understand when uh, when people say, well, so-and-so uh, didn't come to the organization because of the instability possibilities. And uh, they want a long – because every coach, you know, they, they got a family. They, they want long-term possibilities. They want a, a place where they know that the coach isn't going to be replaced next year. So I kind of understand that. Um, look, I, I think that there's a fine line between uh, elite – coaches like uh for instance um uh cleveland and uh, their offensive coordinator what's his name again um not offensive coordinator the offensive line coach um that's a guy that is clearly he makes a difference that's a guy that just that's a former nebraska coach that guy is, uh, without question, the best offensive lineman in the game. So if you get your hands on one of those guys, then that's – that's. but everybody else is kind of – I don't think they make a big difference. I just don't. I think that's kind of overrated. I think most of the coaches are okay. It all depends. Just like any head coach, it depends on your talent. Do you have enough talent to coach? Um, some Look, some guys aren't very good, and hopefully the Jets have let some of those guys go. And they brought in guys that will, will will be an upgrade. But for the most part, I think 80% of your coaches in the NFL are pretty similar, and it all depends on the talent. And I right. and, and, and look, yeah, are they are they that bad? I think if they were, I think the Jets would have gotten rid of them. They're, they're not stupid. Again, I don't think they are. I think if they were that inept, they'd get rid of them. The Hackett thing is completely different. We all know why he's here. There's only one reason. Um, so, right. um, yeah, maybe that's part of the reason why some Jet fans are, are concerned about that because they say, well, Hackett's here. Maybe there's dumb enough to allow this guy to be here too. That's a completely different thing. Right. So. And by, uh, I think you were probably thinking of, he's now with Tennessee, Bill Callahan. Yes, there you go. Who was a great coach, uh, Greg. You, you, you're you 100% right. You hit that on the money. And going back, he was with the Jets too, I think, when um, – Rex was there. He was a fabulous offensive line coach, and uh, it really stands out. So that's a great point, though, too. Yeah, he he is. Uh, again, there's not many of them, but uh, um, I'm actually to tell you the truth. I, I don't. I I would be very intrigued of why Cleveland got rid of him. Maybe Tennessee offered him a much bigger deal because you let Bill well, Callahan go, and and that's. I'm surprised so- by that. Keep in mind, his son is the head coach. Oh, there you go. That's- There's a reason. See? <laughs> yes. There you go. It did have nothing to do with money. So there yeah, you go. Yeah. 
<laughs> you and me might go the other direction, go away from our kids as a head coach, but that he there wanted you go. to. To work with good him. for him. Good for him. That'll yeah, give a, that'll give his head that'll give his uh, son a heads up. That'll turn things. You'll see. You're gonna look at guys on that Tennessee offensive line that were terrible last year, and he's gonna. I guarantee you, one of those guys will be an All Pro next year. And you'll go, how the hell did that happen? That's because Bill Callahan's great awesome. Point. I think it's a great point what you made. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great but they're but those guys are rare. They're not they're not around very often. So, um, yeah, but in general, uh, I think that with uh, the timing of this uh, interview, I think that this is a great uh, – uh, it's been a real – now it's been a really good offseason for Jet fans. Um, I thought it was pretty good until today, and now I think it's really good. Uh, right. There's nothing else they can do. I mean, I don't even know how much money – they can't even have much money left anyway. So yeah. I think they're pretty much cap-strapped. I think we've seen the last of the big-name free agents so I, um, or trades – um, so yeah, I think we're in a situation where it's all about the draft and, uh, I just can't wait for the time, hopefully next season when we're not so excited about free agency in the draft. I'm sick yeah. of being excited about free agency in the draft. I want to be excited about playoff games. Yeah. It's like the Jets always win the off season. Super yeah. Bowl, you know? And I remember I told, uh, on, on our last show and I told my uh, Ralph Sharega, my good friend and Ray Clifford, I said, for all Jet fans, this is going to be the longest off season until the first game of the year. But they're actually doing a good job getting us excited, which is good. And uh, as you know, too, the NFL is like a twelve month uh, season now, where you know it used to be just like six or seven months. So you're absolutely right, Greg. Uh, before I let you go, Marty, I'm going to pop up your uh, the link to your. Uh, podcast. So this is Just Rewind. See, all, all I have to do is scroll down and look at that. There's show, 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 show. Look at all these shows you got. You got shows, show, 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 shows. And uh, uh, how long? And you've been doing this for quite a long time, haven't you? Long time. Yeah. Like the guys I do it with, I know my good friend Ralph, we've been Jet fans forever. I've been a Jet fan since 1964. So uh, a lot of you people, you know, your, your uh, grandparents were my age too. And uh, it's been a long time, and you know we we've been following them. We were up at um, Cortland when they were there. We were there for two weeks, and uh, look, we just uh, kind of bleed green. We you know we just follow it. We we love it, and um, uh, we feel the pain all Jet fans feel. And, you got to put, uh, gotta put a link in here. You you, you know what you know I, I, you can put a link in there to our lads. I'd love to do that. You can go right ahead and do that. You don't you okay. you've got my permission. Okay. All Go right, ahead so and I... do that because that'll give you uh, up to date uh, uh, info on all of the jet step charts, sure. Sure. Um, and um, that's no problem. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, how often do you do the shows? Uh, during the season, we do it twice a week. Off season, we maybe have it once every other week. As we get close to the draft, we're going to have it like weekly. We're working on a live stream for the night of the draft. Which should be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's a good idea. Yeah, so we're doing that, and um, again, we we're we're on and off all the time. We also have a segment during the season called Jets Two Minute Tuesday, where I come on, give a commentary for like two minutes, which uh, a lot of fans seem to love. So, you know, we enjoy doing it, and it's fun. And uh, thank God they're giving like uh, people like Greg De Palmer a, a venue right now where you could do a podcast on the computer and really oh, yeah. uh, you know, inform the fans and you bond with the fans. It's just great. We just love it. Yeah. I remember, uh, uh, I mean, I, I started out for the first 20 years on radio down in South Florida and that's where I got introduced to Dan Leverfeld and, uh, Dan and I went, when, when the internet had just basically got started with podcasting and I, and I went from radio to the internet, Dan and I did Jets confidential podcasts for several years. Um, because I think that Dan does a great job with the Jets confidential, the publication for any Jet fans. I mean, yeah. that, there's nothing else out there that right. is in a, in a actual, uh, like magazine type format, publication type format. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, that, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I was able to go to games, jet games with jet credentials because of my uh, connection with Dan, which was so great. I was able to go interview uh, at the press conferences and interview coaches and, and, and so and players from the Jets 
this was 20, 30 years ago when I was just, a, a, you know, in my 20s, uh, early 30s. It was uh, um, a fun time. And uh, and yet here we are still searching for a Super Bowl all these years later. But what I what I always say, though, is is don't, stop complaining because there are there are fan bases that have never even been to the Super Bowl let alone can say that they've won one. I don't care whether it was in 1969 or whenever it was. It counts. It's a Super Bowl. The Jets have a legacy. They have Joe Namath. They have a legacy. They have something to go back on. Cleveland Brown fans have never. Detroit Lion fans, never. I mean, these are franchises that have never been to the Super Bowl. So believe it or not, Jet fans, there are, there are some fan bases out there that have had a lot worse than we have. So... There you go. That's right. You were sounds like you were a rookie when Rich Semini was a rookie. That's right, Probably. Rich Semini. Okay, there you go. I, uh, yeah. I I've I've had a, a lot of uh, matter of fact, Sal Paulo Antonio. I remember, uh, you know, back in those days, he was still uh, young in the business. But it was a great time to be a Jet fan because that was the time that Chad Pennington uh, was uh, the quarterback. It was the Testaverde Pennington kind of. Uh, uh, era and it was a lot of fun as we know back then it, 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 there were some good times and then of course yeah. bill parcells there was some good times there so yeah. yeah um and i know we've only had uh ryan for two years uh and, and and it's been all downhill since then but um i have confidence uh again i'm excited about to see who they turn it over to as a young quarterback hopefully this year in this draft they'll get someone and um mm -hmm. and and again Wherever Zach goes, I'll be rooting for him. I hope he lands somewhere where he has a shot. I hope he lands somewhere right. where he goes to like Andy Reid or McKay or McVeigh, someone that actually knows what they're doing. And I guarantee you, he'll be a player in this league if he goes to the right uh, right coaching staff. So yeah, good luck to right. him. You're right. Great. All right. Well, again, thanks. When's your next show? Tomorrow. Uh, we we have it coming up next week. Oh, next uh, week, next, okay. A week from today, actually, a week from uh, Friday. So yeah, you got to we'll wait be... a week to talk about uh, the big trade. We'll do a two minute Tuesday. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's it. We might have a special too. You never know. We always pop up, but it's a holiday weekend. All right. So that's, true. Yeah. that's true. That's yeah. true. Marty, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I look forward to talking uh, Jets football with you again sometime right. soon. Thank, thank you so much. And I just want to say I'm one of the old subscribers to our lads when we used to get the four page report in the mail wow so you could tell your boss that i i'm one of the original ones i'm on your original mailing list yeah dan shanka uh dan shanka. yes right. and matter of fact john cooper who's our head scout with dan these guys go way back john's actually going to be uh part of our live mock draft on wednesday so John will be on, and we'll find out what these guys. Sure. I don't. I don't know who has the the. the I, I haven't checked to see who has the Jets pick, but uh, it'll be interesting to see which which direction they go. Um, and uh, again, we'll we'll talk after the draft, sometime between the uh, the, sure. the uh, post draft and and training camp. We'll have another conversation. And we'll find out how uh, how the team did once again at the at the draft. Good. Anytime you want, I'd love to come on. I'd love to have you come on Jets Rewind too. I will definitely do that whenever you invite me, Marty. Appreciate it. And we'll talk to you again sometime soon. Okay. Thank you so much.